Ultra EverDry is a revolutionary coating that can be used for a limitless number of applications from sophisticated electronics to pigeon coops. It has been used on a number of different materials including steel, aluminum, other metals, plastic, wood, and concrete. But in order for Ultra EverDry to perform at the highest level possible and to ensure a long-lasting finish, proper application of the product is very important. This video will help demonstrate the proper applying techniques needed for a high-performing coating and a safe working environment. Step 1. Personal protective equipment and general safety precautions. Always review safety data sheets and wear proper PPE. Ultra EverDry contains organic solvents and particles. Use of a NIOSH or MSHA approved half-face respirator with a P100 particulate filter paired with an organic vapor cartridge is required. Dust masks or bandanas are not sufficient for respiratory protection. Chemical resistant polyethylene or nitrile gloves should also be used. Do not use fabric or gardening gloves to protect your hands while spraying Ultra EverDry. Safety glasses or goggles are also required. A paint suit is optional and can be used to protect clothing from spills or overspray. Surface preparation is an important step in applying any coating. For some metal and plastic items, roughening the surface will help with adhesion of the bottom coat of Ultra EverDry, leading to greater longevity of the coating. Although the roughening shown here involves the use of sandpaper and a scouring pad, industrial methods including but not limited to sanding and blasting may be used. The appropriate method for the specific surface should be evaluated on a test surface. After roughening the surface, clean any dust, dirt, or residue with a vacuum or blower. Wipe down the surface with acetone or xylene and allow it to dry completely prior to applying the bottom coat. Even surfaces that do not require roughening, such as stone, clay, or concrete, should be thoroughly cleaned of any dust, dirt, or loose particulates Prior to applying the bottom coat of Ultra EverDry, mix it thoroughly for at least 5 to 10 minutes. This is necessary because as the containers sit, the polymers settle on the bottom. Without sufficient agitation, the bottom coat will not have the necessary quality to bond with the surface being sprayed. This will result in shortened lifespan of the sprayed coating and in some cases, very little water or oil repellency of the final coating. For quart size containers, mixing can be done by hand. For one gallon or five gallon containers, a plastic propeller attached to a hand drill should be used. A paint shaker may also be used. For 55 gallon containers, more industrial mixing equipment will be required, such as an explosion proof mixer and stand. You can use different sprayers for the applications of Ultra EverDry, depending on the size of the surface being coated and the available utilities. The Ultra Power Sprayer should be used for medium to large surfaces when compressed air may not be an option, but electricity is available. Ultra Mini Sprayers can be used for small surfaces, usually smaller than a standard sheet of paper, and are ideal for demonstration purposes. When using Ultra Mini Sprayers, it is best to dedicate one to bottom coat and one to top coat. For the most professional results, and when compressed air is available, use an HVLP spray gun. The air coming into the HVLP sprayer should be set to 25 to 30 PSI. Always apply the bottom coat in thin, uniform passes. You should only use enough to wet the surface. Do not over apply to the point where there are drips or pooling of the coating. If a thicker bottom coat is needed for longer corrosion resistance, it should be applied in multiple thin coats as opposed to one thick coat. In cases where it is possible, rotating the surface between passes may be beneficial to ensure that all angles of the surface are completely covered. Proper application of the bottom coat will result in a dry film thickness of 0.25 to 0.5 mils, or 6 to 13 microns per coating layer. The bottom coat adheres to the surface and allows for proper, consistent application of the top coat. Improper application of the bottom coat will result in poor longevity and decreased abrasion resistance of the finished coating. If the bottom coat is applied too thick, it will result in cracking of the bottom coat as it dries and will result in poor repellency and abrasion resistance. Once the bottom coat is applied, it must be allowed to dry properly prior to application of the top coat. Allow 15 to 30 minutes for proper drying of the bottom coat before application of the top coat. 
If desired, use of a hair dryer or a heat gun on a low temperature setting may be used to decrease drying times without negatively affecting the coating. Any remaining bottom coat in the spray container can be carefully poured back into the original container for future use. Clean up the sprayer using xylene or another organic solvent as soon as possible after completing the spraying of the bottom coat. Review safety data sheets and wear appropriate personal protective equipment for any solvent that will be used. The bottom coat alone leaves a hydrophobic coating that will repel water and resist corrosion, but will not be self-cleaning or super hydrophobic. Shake or mix the top coat for three to five minutes in order to uniformly disperse the solids throughout the mixture. This is necessary because as the containers sit, the solids settle on the bottom. In a similar fashion to the bottom coat, apply the top coat in multiple thin uniform passes. Allow the top coat to dry for 15 minutes for initial water repellency. Allow it to dry for two hours prior to packaging or handling. Allow it to dry overnight for maximum abrasion resistance and water and oil repellency. The perimeter of this glass has been coated with Ultra Ever Dry. Note, the coating is hazy, not clear. Any remaining top coat in the spray container can be carefully poured back into the original container for future use. Clean up the sprayer using acetone or another organic solvent as soon as possible after completing the spraying of the top coat. The top coat is responsible for the superhydrophobicity, oleophobicity, and self-cleaning properties of the Ultra Ever Dry coating. The Ultra Mini sprayer consists of a glass jar, a power unit, and an intake tube with a filter. The glass jar can be cleaned and reused. The power unit will eventually deplete and need to be replaced. Replacement units are available in 12 packs. Each power unit will spray approximately one third of a quart of liquid. Before using the mini sprayer, remove and dispose of the filter on the bottom of the intake tube. This filter is designed to remove solids from paints, but is not necessary for applying Ultra Ever Dry, and if not removed, may cause clogging issues during the application process. Once the bottom coat has been mixed, fill the jar no higher than the fill line marked on the jar. Hold the sprayer as vertically as possible and never less than 45 degrees from vertical. Tilting the sprayer to an angle less than 45 degrees can result in spilling the fluid from the bottle through the air intake. It can also result in spraying air instead of fluid as the intake straw will not be submerged. Hold the sprayer approximately 6 to 8 inches from the substrate or surface to be sprayed. Start by spraying outside of the substrate if possible and slowly coat the substrate in thin, uniform passes, moving the sprayer at a constant speed and a constant angle throughout the coating process. Overlap each pass slightly in order to ensure that there are no edge defects at the outside spray boundaries. Swirling in between passes will help keep the Ultra Ever Dry thoroughly mixed. In cases where it is possible, rotating the surface between passes may be beneficial to ensure that all angles of the surface are completely covered. When you're finished spraying bottom coat, unscrew the glass jar. Place your finger over the spray nozzle with the intake tube suspended above the glass jar. Press down on the nozzle with your other hand. This will allow some of the remaining bottom coat in the sprayer to drain back into the glass jar. Carefully pour the remaining bottom coat back into the original container. Pour a small amount of xylene into the glass jar. Screw the glass jar back into the power unit and spray the xylene into a rag and wipe the tip of the sprayer. Remove the power unit from the Ultra Mini sprayer and separate the fluid intake tube from the power unit. Rinse the inside and outside of the intake tube with xylene and wipe it clean with a rag. Holding the power unit upside down over a waste container, run xylene through the intake opening and allow it to gravity flow through the sprayer nozzle. Spray the nozzle into a waste container and then, again covering the nozzle hole with your finger, reverse spray the power unit over the waste container. Wipe down any excess bottom coat off of the inside and outside of the glass jar. The unit can now be stored until its next use. Failure to clean the unit immediately after use may result in premature clogging and failure of the sprayer power unit. Using a separate ultra mini sprayer, repeat the process using the top coat after allowing the bottom coat a sufficient amount of time to dry. Clean the sprayer with xylene before spraying. This will not only clean, but also lubricate the internal parts of the sprayer. Fill the cup with approximately 8 ounces of xylene. Connect the air hose to the turbine and gun. 
Turn on the power to the sprayer. Spray the gun into a rag, test surface, or hazardous waste container to help remove any buildup. Using paper or another test surface, adjust the flow of the gun using the dial at the back of the gun. Next, adjust the spray pattern knob at the front of the gun. Hold the spray gun about 6 to 8 inches from the surface. The flow should be adjusted so the test surface is wetted, but not to such an extent that it pools or drips. There are three spray pattern settings that allow for spraying horizontally, vertically, and in detail. The detail pattern is small and circular and is adjusted by moving the spray pattern knob between the vertical and horizontal fan setting. You wipe the inside and outside of the cup with a rag. After the bottom coat has been mixed for 5 to 10 minutes, pour the desired amount of coating into the cup. Fill to no more than 32 ounces of the cup. Do not overfill. Screw the cup into the gun and connect the air hose to the gun. Turn on the turbine. If desired, perform a test spray to double check the spray volume and pattern. Hold the power sprayer perpendicular to the surface being sprayed. Arcing or tilting may result in uneven coating. The recommended spray distance is approximately 6 to 8 inches. Spray edges first, overlap each stroke a minimum of 75%. Move the gun at a constant speed. When you are finished spraying the bottom coat, turn off the turbine, disconnect the air hose, and unscrew the fluid cup. Squeeze the gun's trigger while keeping the suction tube above the cup. This will allow some of the remaining bottom coat in the sprayer to drain back into the cup. Carefully pour the remaining bottom coat back into the original container. Pour xylene into the cup to a height of about 8 ounces. Screw the cup into the gun and connect the air hose to the gun. Turn on the turbine. Spray the xylene into a rag and wipe the tip of the gun. Shake the gun to help move the xylene through the gun and cup. Turn off the turbine, disconnect the air hose, and unscrew the fluid cup. Squeeze the gun's trigger while keeping the suction tube above the cup. This will allow some of the remaining xylene in the sprayer to drain back into the cup. Wipe the suction tube with a rag and set it aside. Remove the o-ring and wipe it clean. Wipe the inside of the molded cup lid. Replace the o-ring and the suction tube. Pour the majority of the xylene in the cup into a hazardous waste container. Leave a little xylene in the cup and use this to wipe the inside and outside of the cup with a rag. Ensure that the threads on the outside of the cup are clean. Repeat the same steps to apply the top coat. Once you are finished applying the top coat, clean the cup and gun using the same procedure used after applying the bottom coat. Once cleaning is completed, you are ready to break down the sprayer components. Remove the air cap ring. Remove the air cap and spray direction plate and place them into the cup containing xylene. Use the wide end of the needle and fluid tip tool to remove the fluid tip. Wipe the tip with an area of the rag that has been wetted with xylene. Carefully wipe the rubber o-ring on the fluid tip with the rag. Inspect the o-ring to ensure that it is not swelled, cracked, or torn. Set aside the fluid tip. Use the needle and fluid tip tool to remove the needle. Insert the narrow end of the tool all the way into the channel containing the needle until it stops. Rotate the tool about 10 times counterclockwise. Carefully pull the tool out of the gun while rotating the tool counterclockwise slightly to remove the needle. Place the needle into the cup containing xylene and swirl the cup to help move xylene throughout the parts. Wipe the inside of the gun's fluid channel with a rag wetted with xylene. Remove the parts soaking in xylene and wipe them down. Take care to wipe the lip seal at the back of the fluid needle and ensure that this seal can move back and forth along the back of the needle. Set the needle aside. Wipe down the air cap and ensure that none of the orifices are blocked or damaged. Wipe down the spray direction plate and ensure that none of the orifices are blocked or damaged. Pour the majority of the xylene in the cup into a hazardous waste container. Leave a little xylene in the cup and use this to wipe the inside and outside of the cup with a rag. Ensure that the threads on the outside of the cup are clean. Notice that the lip seal slides easily along the fluid needle. Reassemble the spray gun. Insert the threaded end of the fluid needle into the fluid channel until it stops. Using the slender end of the needle and fluid tip tool, press the fluid needle in and rotate it clockwise until the tool stops. For lubrication, wipe the fluid tip with an area of the rag that has been wetted with xylene. Press the fluid tip into the front of the fluid channel. 
Insert the spray direction plate into the front of the gun. Insert the air cap into the front of the gun. It will rest loosely on the spray direction plate until the air cap ring is attached. Attach the air cap ring to the front of the gun, but do not over tighten. The spray pattern knob should move easily, but not loosely. Insert the O-ring back into the bottom of the gun. Insert the suction tube into the bottom of the gun. It is convenient to store the needle and fluid tip tool inside the cup when the gun is not in use. Reattach the cup to the gun. We will be showing you how to use an HVLP spray gun with the Warwick 881H spray gun. Although the same principle shown here will be relevant for other HVLP guns, specific details may differ with different spray guns. When you are going to spray with an HVLP system, you will need the following. An HVLP spray gun, air compressor, the larger the better but at least 30 gallons. A 3 or 4 gallon will not be big enough for continuous HVLP spray gun use. Air compressor hose. Unless your air compressor comes in a kit, you will need to buy the hose and coupler separately. Regulator. Filter and moisture trap. Two hose fittings. One for the gun and one for the compressor. And Teflon tape. A high volume, low pressure, or HVLP paint sprayer is generally designed to handle both water-based and solvent-based coating materials. In this case, we're spraying Ultra Everdry. HVLP models are designed to reduce overspray and provide maximum transfer efficiency by limiting air cap pressure. Fill the cup with the required amount of material. Fill to no more than 19 millimeters or 3 quarter inches from the top of the cup. Do not overfill. Attach cup lid. Air volume adjustment. The air volume adjustment is located at the base of the spray gun near the air inlet. When this knob is turned fully clockwise, the airflow is shut off. It takes some experimenting to find the right airflow setting. Too much airflow can make excessive overspray and cause a rippling effect in the liquid that has already been applied to the surface. Excessive airflow can also cause a wet surface to dry too fast, which can create problems in the final results. Too little airflow can result in spots of liquid on the surface. You may notice that the gun is spitting liquid instead of making a nice cloud of spray. Material Volume Adjustment Turning the material adjustment knob clockwise closes the valve to prevent fluid needle movement and stops flow of liquid from the cup into the gun. Fan Adjustment This control, which is sometimes on the side or back of the gun body, adjusts how much the spray stream is flattened into an oval shape. With the fan control fully off or turned clockwise, the spray stream will create a round spot. Turn the fan adjustment counterclockwise about halfway open. If the fan width is set too small, it will take more side-to-side -side passes to cover the substrate being sprayed, but the bigger problem is the fact that it's easy to apply too much liquid and have problems with pooling, which yields poor results. The fan spray pattern can usually be adjusted from vertical to horizontal or any angle in between. Simply loosen the air cap, the removable cover on the front of the spray gun, and rotate the nozzle. It is typical to leave the spray pattern at vertical, in which case the gun is moved in a horizontal pattern. Test Spray Pulling the trigger halfway back will allow only air to flow through the gun. The liquid will not flow until the trigger is pulled between halfway and fully back. Pull and hold the trigger of the HVLP spray gun at the half trigger position and adjust inlet air pressure at the base of the gun. Be sure to install a pressure regulator at the gun inlet to allow for adjustment of the air pressure to 18 to 25 PSI. A higher pressure setting results in better atomization of the fluid, which just means that the spray mist is finer because the droplets are smaller. Note that the air pressure entering this spray gun cannot exceed 50 PSI, so I adjust the pressure regulator on the air compressor down to 50 PSI. Excessive pressure at the inlet side of the gun can damage the gun's pressure regulator. Perform a test spray. If the coating is too wet, reduce liquid flow by turning the liquid adjustment knob clockwise. If atomization is too coarse, increase inlet air pressure. If too fine, reduce inlet pressure. The pattern size can be reduced by turning the fan adjustment knob clockwise. Hold the HVLP paint sprayer perpendicular to the surface being sprayed. Arcing or tilting may result in uneven coating. The recommended spray distance is 6 to 8 inches or 150 to 200 millimeters. Spray the edges first. Overlap each stroke a minimum of 75%, moving the gun at a constant speed.
Cleaning the HVLP. Step 1. When done spraying, pour the unused liquid back into its container. Pour some xylene into the spray gun cup, swish it around, spray the xylene until the clear xylene can be seen leaving the gun. Some opaque liquid may leave the nozzle before the spray appears clear. Spray the xylene onto a rag and wipe the nozzle off. Step 2. Pour most of the remaining xylene into a waste container, but leave a little in the bottom of the cup and wipe out with a rag after applying bottom coat. Follow steps 1 and 2 after applying top coat, then move on to step 3. Step 3. Remove the air cap and soak it in xylene. Remove the nozzle with the multi-wrench included with the spray gun. This requires the 19 mm wrench opening. Once loosened, the nozzle can be unscrewed and soaked in xylene. It helps to pull the trigger while doing this, which attracts the needle. Turn the material volume adjustment counterclockwise until completely out. Pull out the needle and soak it in xylene. Wipe down all parts with a rag. Reassemble the gun. Always turn off the air supply and relieve pressure when the gun is not in use. You should now be ready to apply Ultra Everdry to just about anything. For more information, visit ultraeverdry.com.